it's an honor to be here this morning at Aletheia Christian School. My name is, my name is, oh man, Kent Hovind. I taught high school science for 15 years, and now we have a theme park called Dinosaur Adventure Land. How many of you have been to Dinosaur Adventure Land? Okay. How many of you have never been there yet? Okay, and how many do not understand the question so far? A couple, okay, well good. Well, I normally speak all over the place on creation, evolution, and dinosaurs, but this morning I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite topics, nails. How many of you have ever pounded a nail in before? All right. I like nails. I started pounding nails when I was a little bitty kid. <clears throat> I pounded a lot of nails. I remember one time my daddy took me to tour a factory that made nails. I always wondered, how do they make nails? So we went in this Keystone Steel and Wire Company in Bartonville, Illinois, not too far from where I was born and raised. And they had this machine in there, this whole giant factory. All it did was make nails and wire. It was really cool. They started off with this great big block of steel. It was about this big and this big and eight feet long. They call it a pig, just like a pig you have in the farm, but it's a pig of steel. They put that thing in the oven and got it so hot you could see almost through it. It was cherry red hot, giant block of steel. Then they ran it over to these two rollers and it squeezed it and made it thinner and longer. As they ran it, just like, you know, how many have seen the thing where they wring out the clothes? You got the two rollers and they run it through there and it uh, squeezes all the water out. Those old-fashioned ringers, that's kind of what it was like. It was wringing out, it was squeezing that block of steel. So when, every time they squeezed it, it got thinner and longer. And then they squeezed it on the side, and it got real long. And then they squeezed it again on top, and it got real, real, real long. They kept running it through these rollers and squeezing it and squeezing it and squeezing it. It kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller and longer and longer and longer and longer. Pretty soon it squeezed that block of steel into a wire that was, I don't know, probably a mile long. It was unbelievable how long. And they kept squeezing it down. It ended up being a wire. And then they ran that wire into this other machine. That machine would grab the wire, chop it off, pinch the point on it, smash the head and flip it out into a bucket. Make nails. But it was flipping them out of there so fast, it was filling an entire box of nails about every four seconds. That was how fast that machine was working. It was, if you ever get a chance to watch them make nails, it is really, really cool. It come, that wire just comes in one end, <laughs> out, out the other end comes millions and millions of nails. So that was pretty cool, my experience with touring the Keystone Steel and Wire Company, watching them make nails. I want to talk to you about nails this morning. There's an interesting poem you ought to memorize, pretty cool, this is an old, old poem. For want of a nail, a shoe was lost. Missing one nail, so the horseshoe fell off. Hmm. For want of a shoe, the horse was lost. For want of a horse, the rider was lost. For want of a rider, the battle was lost. For want of a battle, the kingdom was lost. All for the want of a horseshoe nail. One nail fell out made the shoe fall off, made the horse quit running, made the white rider quit working, made the battle go bad, and they lost the war and the kingdom was lost. You know, nails are interesting. We're gonna talk a few things about nails this morning. When a nail fails, if it doesn't do its job, a whole building can start falling apart. How many of you had a hurricane at your house in the last month or so? Hurricane Ivan came through, <laughs> tore up the neighborhood, didn't it? You know, a lot of houses fell down. Others did not fall down. Maybe it was just one or two nails that forgot to do their job. Maybe the nail got lazy. I don't know. But some buildings fell down, some did not. The Bible says Jesus was a carpenter. In the book of Matthew it says, Is not this the carpenter's son, his mother called Mary? Jesus was a carpenter. I bet he pounded a lot of nails in his lifetime. Carpenters pound lots of nails. I like nails. Now, they said, Is not this the carpenter? the son of Mary, the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judah, and Simeon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. That's the last mention of the word carpenter in the Bible, in the book of Mark, chapter 3. It's never mentioned again. Carpenter. Somebody built this podium right here. A carpenter took some wood, cut all the pieces out, and then he nailed it together. But I want to talk to you about some interesting things about nails this morning. The Bible says a prophet's without honor in his own country. Jesus did, was not appreciated right where he lived. That's where he grew up. And the people said, oh, we know him. He's nobody important. But Jesus was a carpenter. The Bible says he could do no mighty work there. 
He wasn't allowed to do great things. Interesting story in the Bible about jail. <clears throat> the first mention of nails in the Bible is a lady named Jail. Jail had a nail. And she did something pretty interesting with it. Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent. They had a big tent, a nail to pound that hold the tent down in the ground. And this bad guy came running up to her house and said, Oh, you got to take care of me. They're after me. They're after me. Well, he was the bad guy. And so she said, Come on in. Here, have some milk and take a nap. I'll take care of you. So while he's sleeping on the tent floor, <clears throat> she took that big tent nail, went over and set it on the temple right beside his head right there. He's sleeping on the floor. She put that big nail there and got the hammer. Boom! Bounded it right through his head and nailed his head to the ground. Nothing like that ever entered his mind before, and so he died. <laughs> so, first mention of a nail is where a lady uh, saved the kingdom by pounding a nail through a guy's head. <laughs> Jail and the nail. You can read that story in the book of Judges, chapter 4. The Bible says David prepared iron in abundance for the nails. You know, iron, like, it's a good thing to make nails out of. Would it be a good idea to make nails out of jello? No. What would happen if you tried to pound them? It would squish all over, right? Would it be, would it be good to make nails out of uh, milk? No. How about ice, frozen water? No. How about gold? Uh, well, gold would probably work better than ice, but it's too expensive and it's too soft. And generally, <clears throat> nails are made out of iron. Iron <clears throat> is pretty cheap, and it's real strong, and it'll do the job really well. The Bible says David prepared nails. Nails don't just happen. They are prepared. If you're digging around in the parking lot, searching through the gravel, and you find a nail, would you think that maybe this happened by chance? No, somebody designed this, right? It was designed. How people can look at things on this planet and think they evolved, I don't know. I mean, if they're digging around in the ground and they find just one nail, they know instantly a human made it. It's man-made. And yet they can't look at their body or the world or the, and, and see that God made it. I don't know why they're so blinded. But nails have to be prepared. They have to be heated up. They have to be mixed with other metals. They have to be stamped on and smashed and coated with different things. There's a lot of work goes into making a nail. The Bible says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it. You know, God is preparing you to do something for his kingdom. This nail was prepared for a job. Would it be a good thing to put, use this nail to pound in the wall to hang a picture on it? It's pretty big to hang a picture on, isn't it? Now, would I use a nail like this to pound in to hold this little piece of trim on the pulpit? No, it probably would break the wood, wouldn't it? Different kinds of nails are prepared for different things. Here you guys are in school. I know you're anxious to get back to class, so I'm going to try to hurry here. How many of you are anxious to get back to class? Two. Okay. How many are willing to stay here for a little longer? Okay, good. <clears throat> you guys are in school because you're supposed to be getting prepared. You don't just come here because it's daylight and you're supposed to go to school, okay? You come here because you're supposed to be getting prepared for something. What is God preparing you for? How many of you know right now what you would like to be when you get out of school? Anybody know? How many are not quite sure yet? You don't know what you want to be yet when you get out of school. Okay. Hey, I'm 51. I'm still not sure what I want to be when I grow up. Actually, I'm not even sure I want to grow up. So, I'd be like Peter Pan, stay a kid all my life, right? <laughs> but it's interesting how nails have to be prepared. You have to be prepared for what you're going to do. Now, my daddy had a philosophy. My daddy said to his boys, me and my two brothers and my sister, she wasn't a boy, but he said, kids, I don't care what you are when you, get out of, when you get out of my house. I don't care what you do for a living. You want to be the president of the United States? Great. You want to be a garbage collector? Great. I don't care what you do. But when you leave my house, you're going to know how to do everything. Well, we didn't quite make it that far, but my daddy taught us boys how to do a lot of stuff. We built a lot of houses. I built nine houses. I have pounded many thousands, probably, I don't know, tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of nails in my lifetime. You need to get prepared. What's God preparing you for? I tell people, by the time my son was in third grade, we knew what he was going to be when he got out of high school. 35. <laughs> what are you getting prepared for? What do you want to be? The Bible says the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith, and he smoothed it with the hammer, him that smote the anvil, saying, It is ready for the soldering, and he fastened it with nails that it should not be moved. Nail it down. 
so it won't move, right? Nail it, the expression they use. That's, that's right, it goes right there, nail it. So now it's not going to move anymore. The Bible says they deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails that it should not, that it move not. The purpose of a nail is to keep something so it doesn't move, right? That's one of the jobs a nail has. Nails are expected to do their job. Suppose all the nails in this building decided, I'm tired, I'm going home for a while. That would be really serious, wouldn't it? Suppose all the nails in your house decided, I quit. What's going to happen to your house? It's going to fall down, right? Boy, you don't even think about it, but right now, all those nails that somebody put in to build your house, they're still doing their job, aren't they? The guy, the carpenter, pounded it in one time and said, that's where you are staying, right there. And he expects the nail to stay there and do his job. Now, God is preparing you for something. He expects you to stay where you are and get prepared, and when he gives you a job to do, do it. How many of you, your mom ever gave you a job to do and you forgot to do it? That can be pretty serious, can't it? Hey, did you remember to turn off the stove, you know, while you're driving off on vacation? No, I forgot. I gave you a job to do, turn off the stove. Your house is going to blow up. Sometimes if you don't do your job, it can cause real serious problems, can't it? Hey, did you remember to take your bike out of the driveway? Was it behind the car? Crunch, crunch, crunch. Oh, you forgot to do your job. <laughs> nails have to be prepared. The Bible says the nails are fastened by the master of assembly. I like to collect wise sayings, okay? A lot of cool things people say. I like to collect stuff like that because it makes you think, wow, that's a good idea. Why saying they stay with you for life, and you need to get prepared, learn things, study all your English. I have people all the time say, "What am I going to need this in school?" How many have ever said that? I don't want to learn this because I'm never going to need this when I grow up. You ever said that before? <laughs> well, you don't know what you're going to need when you grow up. First of all, you might say, "I want to be a baseball player." I'm not going to study this English. Okay. Well, suppose you break your arm and can't be a baseball player. Now what? You know, <laughs> you better learn something. Okay. The carpenter, not the nails. The carpenter decides where they go. This is a little hammer. I'm a carpenter, and I would be ashamed to use a hammer like this, but it's the only one I could find on the way out the door real quick. <laughs> um, they're all using them all on our job sites over there. The carpenter decides, suppose the nail says, I don't want to go here. I want to go over there. I don't care where you want to go. You're going here, <laughs> right? The carpenter decides this is where you go. And if you and I are getting prepared to serve God, God decides what you do for a living. You say, God, I don't want to go to Africa. Okay, well, that's tough. I want you to go to Africa. But I don't want to go. There's a guy in the Bible, he did not want to go to preach to Nineveh. Anybody remember his name? Yes. Jonah. He said, God said, go to Nineveh. He said, I don't want to go. And he went the other way. What happened? Got swallowed by a big fish, by a whale, and spit him out on land. Three days in whale seminary changed his mind. Okay, God, I'll go where you want me to go, Okay. That's all it took. Boy, I bet he smelled bad coming out of that whale. Every nail I know of <clears throat> has to be driven. You have to beat it on the head to make it go. It does not want to go. Have you ever seen a nail just jump out of the box and jump into the board? No. They all have to be forced to go to the right place. Sometimes we're like that, you know. We have to be forced to go where we're supposed to go. Sometimes parents have to make you do your homework or make you make your bed or make you do right or make you brush your teeth. Now listen, kids, you do not have to brush all your teeth, okay? You should only brush the ones you want to keep. <laughs> and don't brush the rest of them. The Bible says, let patience have her perfect work. Stay there, okay? Nails have to be driven. They have to be put in place, and they gotta stay there. Patience means to abide under. Some nails are under a lot of pressure. <clears throat> the whole building's pulling on them. That's okay, they just stay there, and patience, they stay with the pressure all their life. I was in a house, uh, stayed at a house in, where was that, Connecticut, I think, preaching at a church up there. They said the house was built in 1765. That's a pretty old house. Guess what? Those nails are still doing their job. Somebody pounded them in there a long time ago. Serrations in the nail make it stay there. If you look at the top of any nail, the last inch at the top, the last half inch or so, has little grooves on there. They're called serrations. Can you see them on this nail right here? Those little serrations, okay? 
If you pound a nail in almost all the way and then you bend it over the last little bit, what that means is those little grooves are not stuck in the wood. And what's going to happen with time, heating and cooling, shrinking, contracting, you know, expanding, it's going to slowly work its way back out. The nail's not going to hold unless it's fully committed. Get all the way in. That last half inch is the most important part. And it's important that we as Christians get all the way in. You're going to serve God? Oh, then I'm going to go all the way. I'm everything. Fully committed. Those little serrations remind me of that every time I see those. Wow, I'm going to get fully committed. God, I remember one time we were building my dad's house, and we were pounding nails and had some different people helping us, and apparently somebody did not pound the last little part in. Instead, the nail bent over. And they said, well, nobody will care about that. Nobody will notice. Well, guess what happened about three years later? As the people kept walking on the floor, that little nail wasn't fully committed. Pretty soon it started pulling back out. And the floor started squeaking. Every time you walk on it. And then pretty soon it popped up through the flooring, through the vinyl. Made a hole. The nail wasn't fully committed. The Bible says, Thou hast not been as my servant David, who kept my commandments and followed me with all his heart. I want to be known as a person that follows the Lord with all my heart. Now, there's all kinds of nails. I'm going to teach you about a few of them here this morning. This nail has a great big head on it. So does this one. This is not the kind of nail you want to use when, it's going to, when you're all done building the building. You don't want the head to show, okay? Big-headed nails are not used for trim work. There's a lot of big-headed nails using in the framework, you know, holding things up. Some people got a big head and they think they're really important. Okay, well, God's probably not going to use you in a place where you can be seen. He needs somebody a little more humble, somebody with a smaller head, to put them where they're going to be seen. You may be the behind-the-scenes guy, you know. You may be the guy who has to do the work that, that well, it takes a lot of work to run a school, a lot of work to run a church, a lot of work to run a home. But if you got a big head, you're about, if I was a carpenter, I wouldn't put you in a place where you'd be seen all the time. I tried to give you one of those jobs, you know, out in the, in the back 40 doing something yeah, where nobody's going to see you because you've got this big head. We need to keep a humble spirit. Say, Lord, use me. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. See, the reason they were given money was so people could see them. That's what they did in Jesus' day. They'd stand on the corner and say, hey, everybody pay attention now. I'm going to give $1,000 to the offering to the church. Oh, wow, everybody sees them. Oh, he gave $1,000, wow. And Jesus said, well, you got your reward. Everybody clapped and cheered. You're not going to get any reward in heaven now. It'd be a lot better to walk up and say, preacher, uh, I got a little gift I want to give you to help the church out. Put, put an envelope, seal it shut. Or be anonymous, better yet. Don't tell. See, you do it for man's sake, and you get your reward. Do it for the Lord's sake instead. They do all their works, the Bible says, to be seen of men. That's why they do it. But they're not getting the right kind of rewards. The purpose of the double-headed nail, you pound it in, and then when you're done with the job, you can actually grab it and pull it back out. It's got two heads on it. Now, it might be that God is preparing you for a job. He's going to put you someplace, and then later he's going to move you. Some nails are meant to not ever be moved. This one is purposely prepared to be moved. Interesting. God might want you to be a school principal someplace, and after about three years, God says, hey, you did a great job, thank you, you're done, you held your you, you know, did it, you, everything's fine, I'm not mad at you, but I'm moving you someplace else. That happens with teachers, that happens with pastors, that happens with anybody. you got to think, maybe God's preparing me for a great job, I'm going to, wherever he puts me, I'm going to stay there, and I'm not going to squeak, I'm not going to complain, but if he moves me, okay, Lord, I'm willing to be moved. Keep that attitude. Double headed nail, pretty cool. The Bible says the brook dried up. He was there in the brook, he had a river to drink from, and ravens bringing him food, and all of a sudden the brook dried up. He said, Well, I guess it's time for God to move me. I had that happen to me a couple times in my life. The older Christians will know about this. You know, you, you think I'm right in the middle of where God wants me and everything's going fine, all of a sudden the brook dries up. The Lord says, You move over here. Lord, I don't want to move. Oh, we need to send a whale out with him. We'll get your attention one way or another. God can do that. In my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. It says in the Psalms. The Lord says in Isaiah, I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place. He shall be a glorious throne for to his father's house. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, shall the nail that is fastened in a sure place be removed. I thought I was doing the right thing. Lord, I'm trying to do what's right. Yeah, you did fine, son. I'm not mad at you. I'm just moving you. And sometimes, that's what happens. We're going to go 
more concrete and that's our venture item today. Yeah. I'll be more concrete and building something there. We had to use some double headed nails. You put the form up around the concrete, you put the stakes in the ground, and you count them together. You want them to be in there solid, don't you move, but I'm going to pull that nail out there. That's why I use the double headed nail. Maybe God will move you. Underlayment nails are pretty cool. Underlayment nails have little rings all the way up. You pound those things in the ground, pound them into the wood, and you finally get them in. They stick. They are really hard to pull out. When I was a kid, I lived up in Illinois. My brothers and I had, a, had our bedrooms in the basement. Right above us was the kitchen floor. There were two spots on the kitchen floor that squeaked. And Dad would say, okay, kids, go to bed down there. Yes, sir, Dad. And then we'd wait till Dad, and you'd hear the squeak on the floor when he walked back. He's leaving, he's gone. Okay, you get up and play again. Don't you look at me like that. You do the same thing. Come on, now. how many know what I'm talking about? You do the same thing. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'd be down there horsing around, you know, having a pillow fight or shooting spit wads or shooting rubber bands or something at each other, my brothers and I, you know. And all of a sudden, you hear on the floor. Oh, yeah, it's coming. Jump under the covers, pull it up, shut the lights off. <laughs> Come on now, how many of you have done the same thing? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know what gave it away? That squeak in the floor. Right above our head, the floor would squeak. Because one of the nails up there, an underlayment nail, was not doing its job. Underlayment nails are designed to get put in place, get walked on, without complaining. How about you? You get walked on all the time? Maybe you're the janitor. I gotta clean up that mess and get in. Yep, correct. Clean it up again. Now all I do is make a mess around. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm lemon nails. You get walked on without squeaking. God wants He might be preparing you for a job where you're gonna be somebody's servant the rest of your life. Alright, well, shut your mouth, quit squeaking. <laughs> do your job, okay? Alright, do all things without murmurings and disputings, the Bible says, Philippians chapter 2. Concrete nails are pretty cool. These things, you can actually pound them right into concrete. They make hardened nails like this. You can put them in a gun, like a 22, not a regular 22, it's a special gun for shooting nails. We've got one of those guns called the Hilti gun. He put a 22 bullet in there behind it. He put the nail in there. Here's one right here. It's got a special little washer on it. You can put this thing in the gun, put this 2 by 4 up against a piece of steel, like a steel beam in your building, and shoot it. Bang! And it shoots the nail through the wood and sticks it into the steel. It'll only do that because this nail is extremely hard. Now this nail didn't get hard just by sitting around. It had to go through the furnace. They had to specially treat this thing to get it really hot and coat it with carbon and then cool it down just right. It's hard steel. This is made for a really hard job. God might be preparing you for a really hard job. Maybe he wants you to be a missionary in a really hard place. I think probably the hardest place to be a missionary today would be the United States. They don't want to hear it. They've already heard it 400 times. They don't want to hear it. I was over in Russia speaking at a school over there. They had 400 chairs in the auditorium. They said, Mr. Owen, we'd like you to come speak to our students. They brought in 700 high school kids. Only 400 had seats. 300 of them were standing around. They stood absolutely perfectly quiet for two hours while I spoke on three issues. And the teacher said, now, Mr. Holcomb, would you please explain to our students how to become a Christian? Probably none of them have ever heard this before. They would all like to know more about how to be saved. Would you please explain to them how to become a Christian? This is a public school. I said, I would be glad to. <laughs> you know what we need, folks? We need some of you to get prepared to go to places like Russia, Ukraine, Romania, Moldova, some of these former communist countries. And you need to be a missionary. You say, what am I going to need my English? Well, if you try to learn a foreign language, you're going to really wish you had studied your English. Okay. The more you study English, the easier it is to learn a foreign language. But this thing is hard. It's prepared for a special job. I think God prepared me. I'm, I'm a little hard-headed because I go into the universities and debate with the atheists. And I love it. 
I'm just hard-headed, okay? Uh, the Lord said in the book of Isaiah here, I've set thee, I've set my face, Isaiah said, I've set my face like a flint. Flint is a really hard rock. God might be preparing you for a really hard job. Well, okay, you got to go through the heat, you got to go through the fire to get there, but that's all right. The Bible says endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, 2 Timothy. Hard nails have been through the fire, but now they can handle really tough jobs. Like they can be pounded into steel, they can be pounded into concrete. They're made, they're made for a hard job. Some of you say, oh, I have a hard time at life. You know, my, my brothers beat me up all the time, and my, my neighbors make fun of me, and, you know, the kids in school laugh at me. Well, okay, hang in there, keep serving God. That's probably preparation for a hard job. Don't the guys that go out for the Olympic teams have a lot of hard work to do to get ready for them? Get up every morning, run around the track a bunch of times, lift a bunch of weights. Sure, they're getting prepared for the Olympics. God's preparing you for something. Now, galvanized nails are interesting. This big one here happens to also be galvanized. What they do is they dip it in a special mixture of other metals, zinc and tin and stuff like that, and it puts a coating on there. The galvanized nails are specially designed for working outside. You can pound them outside and, and they stay. They don't rust. Maybe God's preparing you for a special place. What's God preparing you for anyway? It's probably going to be different for each of you, okay? The Bible says there were 40,000 prepared for war. Last week, I spoke at a military base up in uh, Georgia. We had about 1,000 guys there. All these guys, you know, they're military, they're in boot camp, you know, Fort Benning, Georgia. They're getting prepared. When I went, spoke at one military base, where I was now, the guys had to come in. When they go through the cafeteria line, they're not allowed to walk like this. As long as they're going through the line to pick up their food, they have to only walk sideways. But they're, they get their tray and they walk like this. Even if they're going to walk all the way to the end of the gym and they're not going to get any food, that's just part of the boot camp training. You have to walk sideways. I thought, that looks stupid. Well, yeah, but it doesn't matter. They're being prepared to obey orders. The sergeant says, this is how you do it. Yes, sir. And you have to learn to instantly obey if you're going to survive in the battle. Suppose you're a soldier and your general says, or your sergeant says, everybody duck. And you turn around and say, why? I don't see anything to duck for. <laughs> that extra half second just might be too late, right? You just obey instantly. That's why probably most of your parents are trying to teach you to obey and obey right away and obey cheerfully. Make your bed. Yes, ma'am. Instead of make your bed, oh, do I have to? <laughs> Just obey instantly. They're prepared for war. Now, tar paper nails are pretty cool. This one has got a big plastic cap on the top. You know the purpose of a tar paper nail? It's to nail down tar paper. You probably see these all over Pensacola since everybody's got their roof blown off, right? How many of you had damage to your house from the hurricane? Just about everybody. What you do, you roll out the tar paper and then you pound these little nails in. They have a big plastic washer on there. This nail is designed, it's only going to be used for a short time. Once the shingles are put in place, it's wasted. Sometimes, some people in the Bible, God prepared them for just one job. They only did it one time, and then you never hear about them again. God may just have one big exciting thing for you to do in your life. Okay, great. They only need, only need it for a short time. Now, train nails, the ones that hold down train tracks, railroad spikes, those are big. How many know what a railroad spike is? Okay, those big ones? Well, when they pound those things in, they take a big hammer. They are designed to hold the train track in place. Railroad nails have to be huge, they have to be really strong, and they better stay there. What would happen if a bunch of railroad nails decided, I don't want this job anymore, I'm leaving? That'd be really serious, wouldn't it? Now, a couple of quick lessons here. I mean, we'll quit. I know you guys are anxious to go back to school. The carpenter runs out of work. If his nails aren't there, he's got to have his nails, right? Our job is to get prepared, say, Lord, use me someplace. You kids ought to be praying several times a day. Lord, would you please prepare me and use me someplace? Get prepared. Learn something, study, read a book, shut off the TV once in a while. Get prepared, okay? One nail can fail and start a chain reaction because it puts strain, it puts more strain on the rest of them. I remember one time my brother and I were building this big office building for my dad up in Illinois, 
and we had this wall stood up, and we were putting the braces on the wall, and one nail pulled out of one brace, which made the wall start to lean, which made more strain on the next one. Pretty soon, it pulled out. Now, if all the nails had done their job, nothing would have happened. But one nail decided to not do his job, and that put strain on all the rest of them, and the whole wall went <laughs> crash down into the parking lot from the second floor. <laughs> not good. Wonder how many things have gone bad in this world just because one nail decided not to do his job. Hmm. Half of the nails I've used in my lifetime had the head on the wrong end. If I want to pound a nail in, I say, wait, 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 the head's on the wrong end. What do you do? Turn it around, right? Okay. God might have to turn you around to get you uh, where he wants you to be, too. Just say, Lord, use me somehow. Okay. Now, I've never had a nail jump out of the bag and jump into the hole. Everyone had to be knocked in the head. And most of my life, the Lord's had to knock me in the head to get me to go where I wants to go. How many of you older, how many of you teachers and staff know what I'm talking about? God's had to knock you in the head a few times to get you someplace. Okay. Get in the hole. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's what God has to do with me all the time. Building a house requires lots of nails. They have to be prepared, they have to be put in place, and then they have to stay faithful. You need to uh, say, Lord, prepare me, put me where you want me, and help me to be faithful. Stay there. The book of Nehemiah, he said, I'm doing a good work, I can't come down. Why should the work cease while I go talk to you? They said, why don't you come down, Nehemiah, let's talk in the plains of oh no. Well, if anybody invites you to oh no, you say, oh no, <laughs> I'm not going down there. Good story in the book of Nehemiah. In the book of Isaiah, the Lord said, who shall I send and who will go for us? Then said, ah, here am I, send me. Hey, when I was 16 years old, I got saved. I said, Lord, I don't know what you want for my life, but use me for something. Wouldn't it be awful to be a nail, to get all prepared and then never be used? Huh. It's a great tragedy when a nail is not ever used. It's prepared, it's ready, do something with it. I don't want God to say, oh, Hovind, I got you prepared, I sent you to school, I put you through all this stuff, and now I'm putting you on the shelf. I'm not going to use you. Hey, I'd rather burn out than rust out any day. I got some rusty nails right here. These nails are all rusted together because they never got used. They just sat in the bucket, waiting and waiting and waiting, and never got used, and now they're, now they're useless. Boy, there's a lot of people, Christians, God's children. Something's wrong. They just, they're not willing, they're not available. I don't know what it is, but they don't, don't get used, okay? What a shame. It was prepared. Somebody put some work into that to make that thing, and then it never got used. Our job is to get prepared and get motivated. How many have seen our super airplanes fly? We did that here last time. Those airplanes, we do them in Dinosaur Adventure Land. You get prepared, and then you get motivated, and see how far you can go for the Lord. The Bible says in the book of John, Chapter 20, he could see the print of the nails. Jesus was nailed onto a tree, onto a cross. How many saw the movie The Passion? Oh, man. Nailed him on that cross. This is a model we've got in our Dinosaur Adventureland Museum of a nail that was found at a Roman camp in Israel. They used those Roman nails, probably the, similar to the one Jesus was crucified with. That nail's that big. And when they nailed them on the cross, they didn't nail them through the hands like they always show on the movies and stuff. They nailed them right here through the wrist. He nailed them through the hand, and pretty soon it just tears the skin out. You see, in, in the Greek language, when they talk about hand, that means anything up to here. This is your hand. Now, in English, it's different, okay? But in their language, anything from here to here is your hand. So they nailed them right through the wrist. You know what's in the middle of your wrist right there? all the nerves, the blood vessels, and they would put a big washer on, take that big nail, and pound it through the wrist with that big washer on there, then the person's hanging there on the nails. Praise God for those nails that nailed Jesus to the cross. He took our sins and it was nailed to the cross. Hey, are you saved? Come to visit Dinosaur Adventure Line and see the nail we've got there of the type Jesus was probably crucified with. What an awful way to die. Hey, question. <clears throat> Are you prepared? 
Are you getting prepared? You're in school, are you studying hard or are you goofing off? If you're a Christian, what on earth are you doing for heaven's sake? Get prepared, do something for God. You see, God made this world. He made you. God has a plan. He wants you to be involved. If you don't want to be involved, okay, he'll use somebody else. But you ought to be praying, God, use me for something. I want to be involved. I want to be in the middle of your will. What can I do? What more can I do? Every day I pray something like that. Lord, show me how I can get more done for you today. God made this world, and he made the rules, and we broke his rules. He told us in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not bear false witness, don't lie. <clears throat> how many of you have ever told a lie in your life? Come on, put your hand up, or you're doing another one. Okay. Bible says, thou shalt not steal. How many ever stole something? Come on, you already told me you're a liar. Put your hand up. You stole something, okay? Quarter out of your mom's purse, a paper clip, or off the teacher's desk. You stole something, okay? All right, so far, just from reading two commandments, we already know we're all a bunch of lying thieves. We're going to have to be punished, or you better find a substitute. And Jesus Christ died on that cross so you can have your sins forgiven. Hey, question. Where would you go if you died today? You guys are pretty close to the airport here, aren't you? What if an airplane accidentally landed on this building instead of the runway? You're sitting in school studying your, you know, social studies or something. All of a sudden, an airplane comes in <laughs> right on the roof. Where would you go? Are you going to heaven? Well, if you're not sure you're going to heaven, you better talk to one of your teachers today and say, Hey, teacher, uh, I want to make sure I'm going to heaven. You better be real sure. I wouldn't drive on the highways in Pensacola unless I knew I was going to heaven. Have you seen the way they drive around this town? You can get killed this afternoon. I'm going to die someday. I'm going to try to make it the last thing I do, but it's going to happen. Okay? It's going to happen to you too. Where are you going when you die? All you get in this life is a little bitty dash between two dates. That's all I've got. A little bitty dash. What are you doing with your dash? What on earth are you doing, for heaven's sake? If you're here today and you're a Christian, you got Jesus living in your heart, you're saved, your sins are forgiven, you ought to be saying, Lord, prepare me for something. Maybe God wants you to be a pastor, maybe a missionary, maybe a school teacher, maybe the President of the United States, maybe a janitor, I don't know. But if God called you to be the janitor, you say, man, I'm going to be the best janitor there is. Those toilets are going to shine. I'm going to clean that floor so you can eat off it. <clears throat> if I'm going to be a teacher, well, bless God, I'm going to be the best teacher there ever was. Now, I don't want you to name any names here, but how many of you had a teacher sometime in your life that was just basically boring. <laughs> I've been in classes before like, oh, you've got to be kidding. Teacher, come on and go liven it up, would you please? If God's called you to teach, then man, you say, bless God, I'm going to be the best teacher. I'm going to blow something up or burn something down or pound a hole in something. What are you doing, for heaven's sake? If you want to get any of our materials, we'll be glad to help. We've got all kinds of stuff on dinosaurs and creation. We're adding a whole lot of new stuff to the museum in the next couple of weeks. If you want to come by, bring your classes over. How many of you kids know what, how to do this now? If you beg your teacher long enough, you can talk them into just about anything. How many know how to do that? Okay. Okay, good. Okay. You need to come see the stuff we've done in our museum. Uh, it's really, really cool. Thank you so much for coming. Let's all stand, bow our heads, and close our eyes, and let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for these young people. Lord, I pray that they will get prepared. I pray that you'll take these kids here this morning and heat them, Pound them, shape them, coat them. Do whatever you got to do, Lord, like you do with the nails. Get them prepared, Lord, for something, for your kingdom. Help them to be willing to go wherever you tell them to go and then stay there until you decide to move them. Help us, Lord, to learn a lesson from a simple nail. Lord, I want you to put me where you want me and <clears throat> use me to do something for your kingdom. Help me to be faithful, Lord. Help me to stay straight. Lord, I pray for these young people here. There might be some that aren't saved. They're not going to heaven if they die. Lord, I pray that you'll speak to their hearts, help them to realize they're lost, and they need a Savior. And then, Lord, help them to seek out somebody who can show them how to go to heaven. And, Lord, there might be some children in this room, some kids, some young people, some men or women that are they're saved, but they're wasting their life on dumb stuff. 
Father, get a hold of their hearts now. In Jesus' name, amen.